Hello, my name is Victor Obeck, and I'm the Storage and Handling Coordinator for the Philadelphia Public Health Department. First, let me thank you for your time and attention. As a site using federally funded vaccine, you are required to adhere to the CDC's Storage and Handling Toolkit. This is a document that was developed to maintain a temperature controlled environment for your vaccines. And a major component of this is monitoring your units with a digital data logger or DDL for short. This is a scientifically calibrated thermometer that records temperatures at intervals of no less than every 30 minutes. The ones that we use record every six minutes. Before we discuss how to operate the DDL at your site, I'd like to go over its parameters and quickly uh, discuss the acceptable temperature ranges for storing vaccine. All right, vaccines held in a refrigerator should be between two and eight degrees Celsius or 36 and 46 degrees Fahrenheit. The CDC defines any temperature range outside of this as an excursion. For reporting purposes, our DDLs are equipped with an alarm. An, an excursion that lasts one hour above the acceptable range or one half hour below the acceptable range will set off the excursion alarm. Vaccines held in a freezer should be held below negative 15 degrees Celsius or five degrees Fahrenheit. Any temperature above this for one hour, again, will set off the alarm but we do not set a lower alarm on conventional freezers as they are unlikely to ever get too cold for vaccine storage. Okay, so these are the DDLs that our department supports. We provide them and every two years, we will swap them out for a newly calibrated DDL. They're pretty simple. They only have two buttons. One is uh, to review your min-max and the other is to turn it on and off. The display, uh, the display is also pretty simple. The time is set automatically. You don't have to do anything. And it always displays the current temperature inside the unit. The day count is how long the DDL has been running since it was last downloaded. And we require you to download the temperatures every 30 days. So if you saw, say, 28 days on there, it would be a good idea to download your temperature logs and submit them. In the upper left-hand corner, that check mark means that the temperatures are within range and there has been no alarm. However, if you see that check change to an X, um, there has been an alarm. The DDL will also start beeping audibly if this happens. And when you notice that the, there's been an alarm, um, what we're gonna want you to do is contact us immediately. Even if the temperatures are back within range, if you see that there's been an alarm, download and email us your temperature logs immediately. So, when do you need to download your DDL and send us the temperature logs? Well, you're gonna do this, like I said, at least once every 30 days, or when you see an alarm. And finally, whenever you place an order in Filibax. There are two ways to submit your temperature logs. Uh, one is on Filibax, which we'll discuss um, shortly, or you can simply email your DDL files to tempcheck at philo.gov. When you email your files, um, please reference your Filovax pin so that we can file those away pretty quickly. All right, so now let's go through the process of downloading your DDL. So the first thing you wanna do uh, at your site, uh, if you have a refrigerator and a freezer, they should already have DDLs monitoring them. The first thing you gonna wanna do uh, is stop the DDL. So to do this, um, you wanna uh, turn it off before you unplug the wired probe. Simply hold down that stop or start clear stop button, you hold it down for two seconds. You will see the record box disappear and the words stopped uh, appear. When that happens, let go and it will stop. The DDO no longer reads the current temperature. Instead, it just says stopped. If, the cycle, if, if it cycles back to the temperature, you didn't do it right. Try it one more time. Once the DDO is stopped, now it cannot be turned back on. So you have to download the temperature logs. So once the DDL is stopped, you can unplug it and walk it over to your computer where the LogTag USB reader is plugged in. Then open up your LogTag Analyzer software. It will open to this blank gray screen. At this point, you can drop the DDL into the USB connected cradle. LogTag will automatically detect the DDL and download the temperature files as well as reset the DDL so it can be turned back on. 
The files should appear automatically on your desktop where you can email them as attachments to tempcheck at fella.gov. If your software does not do any of this, contact us and we can help you properly configure your uh, log tag analyzer software. And now that you're done, you can take the DDL back to, the comp uh, to your uh, probe, plug it back in and start it back up. So when the DDL says ready, that means you can turn it back on. This is what happens after you download the temperatures. It will switch from saying stopped to ready. To do this, you hold down the start, clear, stop button. Again, same thing for two seconds and then let go. You'll see the words starting appear and when the word ready disappears, then you let go. And again, that takes two seconds. If you do it right, the current temperature will reappear and the day count will be reset to one. You can walk away and forget about the DDL, but not for too long, because although it's not something we require you to report to us, the CDC does say that all sites should be keeping a paper log as a backup. The practice we recommend is to check the temperature twice a day, record the min-max at the beginning of each day and the current temperature at the end of each day. To get the min-max, uh, simply press the review mark button Press it one time and we'll display the max temperature for the day. Uh, press it again and you will see the minimum temperature. Now, because of the way the alarms are set, it is possible that your unit could have an excursion, but no alarm. So if you notice a temperature in the min-max that is outside of the acceptable range, there's no need for be worried, but I would suggest downloading your temperatures and setting them to tempcheck at philly.gov because we can take a quick check on that and see if there's any issues that we can catch ahead of time. Uh, it's good to know if your unit is running a little too cold, not cold enough to get an alarm, but if it's running cold, it may set off an alarm in the future. All right, so speaking of alarms, if a DDL does alarm, the very first thing you want to do is stabilize your temperatures. Sometimes this can be a very simple process. For example, let's say you discover that the refrigerator door has been left open. In that case, the fix is easy. Close the door, wait for the temperatures to come back into range but sometimes it can be something out of your control. Say the power has gone out and Pico is reporting that it will be off for hours, or maybe the refrigerator has broken and you need to recall a repair person. In a situation where the vaccines um, or getting the temperatures back into range is not possible, you're gonna need to move the vaccines to a different unit. Regardless um, of whether you move the vaccines or not, if the alarm has been triggered, remember, be sure to label the vaccines do not use and contact tempcheck at phila.gov for further instructions. So let's talk about moving your vaccines in emergency. Every site should have an emergency management plan affixed to their storage units. This is a document that lists the names of emergency contacts as well as the location of a backup unit. Your site should have a transportation plan ready ahead of time. This picture below is an example of how to move vaccines in an emergency. You can see that they have a hard-sided cooler in which they've added ice packs. You do not want to use dry ice. Also, vaccines should never be touching ice. Even if it's a frozen vaccine, you don't want to be storing it right on ice. So in the picture, you can see they have bubble wrap, which they're going to use as a buffer between the ice packs and the vaccines. You can also use about a half inch of cardboard too. Finally, they have a DDL with them to monitor the temperature. So if you are moving your vaccines out of your unit because something's gone wrong, you're going to go ahead and take the DDL and that probe and bring it with them. This way we have a continuous coverage of the temperatures of your vaccines, even if you've moved them out of that refrigerator. Now, well, the method I just described is acceptable in an emergency, it is not appropriate for a planned transport of vaccines. This would be a situation where you're moving vaccines to a new location or you're conducting a clinic offsite, or maybe you're defrosting your unit and you just need to move the vaccines out of that unit for a little while. In that situation, the CDC wants you to use a purpose-built cooler. What this means is a cooler made specifically for vaccine transport. And these items are expensive and they're also in high demand throughout this country right now. So don't worry if you don't have one on your site. This is something we can loan to you. Just reach out to us, let us know when you're planning to move the vaccines and we'll work with you to get a cooler to go ahead and move that. On that note, I just wanna reiterate that you can contact TempCheck email um, for any issues you have with temperature logs or the DDLs. 
If the DDL won't start, if you see a low battery symbol, take a look uh, every time you uh, look at that to see if you see any issues. Um, whatever the issue is though, reach out and we can help you pretty quickly. We check the emails regularly. We always have someone who's available to answer questions and give support. Now finally, I mentioned that we're gonna go over how to upload the temperatures in Philibex. This is also covered by Mohan in his ordering training. So you may already know this, but it can't hurt to have a refresher. So real quick, in Philibex, you can navigate to the clinic tools. There you will see the approved units at your site um, that are listed. To upload the temperature logs, choose the unit you wanna upload the temperature logs for and press on that log button and you will then select log temp upload CTM. This will bring you to another screen where you can then select the choose file button, select the exact uh, Excel file you want to upload. When you do this, make sure that the serial number and the name of the unit matches the serial number of the DDL um, that you're uploading, and then press the upload button. The file will upload, but you're not just done yet. You need to press confirm to save the temperature files. So if you ever run into an error with this method, um, again, just email your files to tempcheck at philly.gov along with the description of the error and we can always upload the files for you and fix the error.